Hey, what's up? It's me, Doc. And of course, it's our new video, the Yamaha Motif ES. You know what I mean? And I mean, yes, not ES. <laughs> Check it out. This is a great new machine. We love it a lot. A lot of producers are using it today in the hip hop world, in R&B, in everything. It's got great sounds, a lot of great club sounds also, a lot of great bass sounds, a unique way of actually combining uh, sample sounds and synthesis. So it's a really great machine. Well, we're going to cover the sampling, how to record, how to use MIDI, everything possibly that we can come up with or we see in the book so you can understand it better than, of course, what the book does. But check it out. Let's get busy. First, I want to show you this octave thing. This is real cool. I can hit a note here. That's low. Go lower. Now watch. You can change the octave any note, it'll change the entire octave, all the notes on the keyboard. That's really cool. Okay, next we have here, this is our pitch bend. That's really cool to pitch bend those sounds. I'm going to pitch them down, turn the octave down, I can pitch it. Really cool. Also, modulate our sound. Now, it's actually modulating these certain sounds that are within this one sound. We have our, our pitch on, but when we don't... Is there modulation going on? We also take that one sound... See that? So we can actually use our ribbon slide to get that kind of a... Or without it, with it, or really cool effect. Now, also we have right here. This is our volume, our master volume. This is, of course, to get our sounds up and down for the volume. We also have these four other faders right here. Where we can control certain parts of our mix. We also have zones. You can see here we can select certain zones. We actually want to use certain zones within the adjustment of a sound or a waveform. Now above our control sliders from 1 to 4, which are right here, we have, as you can see it says volume 1, 2, 3, and volume 4, it says right there. Now I can press this button right here, and now this activates the low, low mid, the high mid, and the highs. This is for the EQ. For that particular sound I might choose to edit. And it has to do with these, each one of these four knobs. Knob one, two, three, and four. Now we can also, we'll press tone here. Also press our pressure effects. And we can add some more petition effects with these knobs now. So that means when the light's here, we're actually EQ section. And when the light's here, we're actually in the arpeggiator effects section. The swing, the gate time, the velocity. See that right there? All these parameters here are adjusted with these four knobs. We can go to here, now we have the cutoff, the resonance, the attack, and the release. And each one of these knobs control correspondingly each one of these parameters. I can go to here again and press pan and send, and we now have the pan, the reverb, the chorus, and the tempo. See that? So this section is our knob control function section. We control a lot of different parameters within our motif. Okay, here our next thing I'm going to show you is the sequence transport. Pretty simple. You press this button, here's the locate button. It takes you back to the top of the sequence. This will rewind you back to the next measure maybe. This will rewind fast forward to the next measure. Just one, two. Here we have the record button. We'll press this into pattern for example. I'll press this 
and we see the record light light up. See that? And we can press stop and we've stopped the record function. We can press record and press play here and we get a metronome start off and stop it like that. See that? That's pretty cool. Now here we have our effects section. We have our master, we have the system, and the insertion. This is bypass here, as you can see this insertion of system. Now here I can play a sound and turn the effect on. And we get more effect that we have already in there. So we can turn our effects on or off in this section. Next we have here our remote section for our pegiation, our arpeggiator actually. And here we can press it on or off. Now some sounds you play them, they're going to have this come up automatically. You could be in let's say uh, performance mode and hit a sound. I can turn this off and over here's the sound. So it sort of arpeggiates that sound that we're hitting on the keyboard. This is our mode section. Here we can access the various modes on our Motif ES. We have our performance mode, the master on, have the voice mode. We can also go here to file. We can load up sounds. We can go to pattern mode. Make up a particular pattern. We can put a song mode. Turn those patterns into a song. We can go to utility. Here we can utilize information. We can change the volume setting for the keyboard. We can set the toning up for the keyboard and also the note shift and other various parameters. We have the mixing mode. We can mix our sounds. We have our integrated sampler mode. We also have our store mode. We can go to a job, edit, edit that job. So we can allows us here we can access the information and then we can also edit it right here. Okay I'm in performance mode now and we have our screen right here. We have a little this little knob here I can turn it and adjust the view screen. See that? It's a little bit better. Right about there is good to me. See that? It's pretty cool. Now below the screen we have our little buttons to help us navigate to certain pages within each parameter, each mode we might go to. And so as you can see right here we have F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here we have, this is S, F1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here you can find some general information. This will help you out a lot. You may go to a section. Well, I'm not too sure what I'm doing here. We can press our information button right there. Okay, right here we have our decrease and no, increase and yes. We have the exit, that particular page. We can enter, say yeah, we want to enter this information in. So our cursor buttons, we can go up or down or left to right. And here we can scroll through the data. We want to go up and down and this one just go, hey, let's just turn the knob and scroll through our data. Now here we have our user section. We have our presets right here. We have sounds we can select. We also have our category. Let's pick a bank, pick a category here. We go to bank and we can pick let's say pianos, keyboards, uh, we have organ, guitar, we have bass, strings, brass, and you can see the names below each one of these buttons. And the button will light up also here, as you can see right there. And another row right here of more stuff. Lead. We have our synth pad. We have our synth comp. You can read the sounds below each one of these things. And then we have a section. We can go through sections also here. I'm pressing the section button. We have a track select. You can select a particular track you want to record to. Let's say we're in pattern mode, for example. We want to record the track one or track nine or to track two or three. And in some cases we can go to solo mute and we can say, okay, we're now in solo mute. I want to mute that track or turn that track off or turn these on, turn these off. So this allows us to do several things within our session. Okay, right here we've got a little gain button. This little gain thumb screw here, turn this little thing here. And you can increase the gain on our input in when we're sampling. Our analog digital input, and that's our right and that's our left. 
Now here's our plug-in slots too. We can open this little door here and we can put our plugins right here. And right here we have headphones. Put your headphones in there and you're good to go. Now here we've got our output. Our left and right. Here we have these two cables leading to our output to our system, our audio mixing system. Which in our case is our Pro Tool system. We also have a signable output, which is our left and our right, right there. Okay, right here we have our smart media card section. So you can put a card right now, pull a card out right now. My machine is there, right there. This is the kind of type of card we need to use in our motif. See that? We take it, put it in the slot. We can store data on this card. We can load up data from this card also. So it's important to put your card in first and then turn your motif ES on. Alright, next we have right here this is like foot controllers. Right here, as you can see the foot controllers. You can put your foot switch here for foot controllers. And here we have also a foot switch for sustain controllers, which are assignable. You can buy a foot pedal, stick them in, and check your settings out, and make sure they match your Motif ES. Now next to that, right over here, we have these MIDI in, out, and through. The MIDI in, which means MIDI information is going in, the out means going out, and through means what's ever going in is going through the machine out to the next keyboard or the next sequencer or whatever MIDI device that's going to receive that specific MIDI information. Now we also have our USB inputs here as you can see here. We can go to device to host. See that? It's not to device or to host. This is USB right there. Now right here I've got my input. Make sure your cable's tightly in there. It's got to be real tight. It should be properly in there. That's good. My on and off switch is right there. Off. And push it in for on. Once we're on, we're ready to go. Okay, let's turn on our Motif ES. Now once you turn it on, it's going to load up. The Motif will scan for the plugins. It's checking for on board plugins. Okay, now it's scanning and loading demo songs. These are demo patterns that's loading into our Motif ES. We press pattern, and now you're going to see here it says R&B. You can press play, and then we'll hear some of these tracks here. I'll go to the next one. Stop it. See, all the stuff is in this machine. And I usually don't want that to start my machine. It's a good sort of sequence to listen back to what they gave us. But what I really want to do is do my own thing. So, I'm going to press Utility first. And here in Utility, I'm going to press his Other there. Now, Other corresponds to this button right here. I'm going to press this button here for Other. And now we see this Auto Load. I don't want to auto load that stuff up. I'm going to go to Off. Next. I will press store. Now see that? It stored it. Now watch this. I'll turn it off, turn it back on, and now the Yamaha Motif ES will not load up those demo songs. We don't want those. We're going to make our own tracks. It's our session. See that? Now watch. I'll press pattern, and the very first pattern has nothing in it now. Now we can start making our own tracks. Okay, now we have a blank pattern. And we probably want to start making the beat up. Well, the first thing I want to do probably is set up my motif to record on a separate track. Now right here we have track one selected. Now of course, on the track select side, which is the right hand side of my motif, I can press the 1 button, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, and you can see how it goes to each one of these tracks from 1 through 16 in this particular pattern. That's really cool. Now the first thing I like to do is to name my pattern. Here's how you do it. I'll normally go press record, record button, as you can see there. I'm in pattern mode. I'll go to job, and here we're in pattern. See that? It can be an undo, it can be a note, event, phrase, track, but pattern. Now that I'm in pattern, I can actually name it. I'll go down here to 5. I'll press enter, and here we can name our pattern. 
we turn our data wheel, select the, the uh, number or the letter to call this, and we can go to list actually, press information, and you can see the list here. See that? I can go to my next spot right there, turn my data wheel. The next one. Next one. And there we go. Demo. I'll press enter. Complete. I'll press pattern. And the name appears right there called demo. Now next, I've got the name of my sequence set to go. I want to start to record. But first, I'll press my record button. And I want to set up my motif to record the way I want it to record. Now here we have type of recording process. We can overdub, which means if we have something played already, we're going to add to it, overdub on top of that. We can go into the first thing, which I normally do is replace. That means what's ever there. If I record something, I can record over it again until I get it perfect. Then if I want to add to it, then I'll go to overdub. We can also go to step. It's a step edit. If we know exactly where we want the sound to be, let's say on the first beat of the first measure, we can use step edit to place that particular sound, note, or sample right where we want it to be. Okay, in our events area here, of event, we can have the note, of course, record the pitch band, see? Various data, of breath. First parameters we can actually record an event. Right now, I'm going to deal with note mainly, just note. Okay, there it's note and step. See, it's step, it's note. So on step, we can go note, pitch bend. We can go to this bank, MSB. We can go to the mod wheel. We can call this various information, you know, step by step. Also, if you want to go to, let's say, the overdub, it's different. We have loop on. The loop can be on. In overdub and in replace, we have the loop on and the quantize value. Now here in replace, we have the loop on, which means we're going to loop our whole segment. Whether it's five or four measures or whatever, we're going to loop that whole sequence. Here we have a quantized value. It's important to place a quantized value whenever making up a sequence. That's very important. Okay, we must set a quantized value. It's very important. That way, if we're a little bit off, the motif will correct it. Now here, look at this. We'll zoom in a little bit here to get a, a closer view of this so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we have the quantized value and it's set to, that says 60, and it's actually a 30 second note. See that? Cool. Next, we have this value here. This is a 16th note, triplet, that's set to 80. Here is a sixteenth note, not a triplet, and that's one twenty, that's the value. Here we have that is an eighth note, triplet. See that three right there? And that's set to one sixty. The next one is an eighth note, which is not a triplet, but a regular eighth note, which is at the two forty. Here we have a quarter note triplet. See that? Quarter triplet. 320. Here we have a quarter note, 480. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the value right here. From the quarter note to the 16th note, by the 32nd note, triplet. Watch this go back to here again, or off. And here's our 32nd note. See that? I want to set my quantized value to something very simple, just to 16th notes right there. Next move my cursor over, I can set my tempo up. See that? I can set my tempo, whatever I want to set it to, turn my data wheel, I'll set my tempo maybe to like, ooh, maybe like 105 or something. See that? That's pretty good. As you can see there, if I note and I replace. Now in this particular sequence, I want to start recording on one. I'll press one of my track select, as you can see right there, we're ready to record on track one within the sequence. But before I 
recording this track, I want to pick the sound I want to use. So right here, as you see it says voice, I'm going to select F2. And now I have a voice that I can record in this particular sequence, which is this pattern, on track. That's a piano sound. And here, you've got pianos, of course, and I can select other sounds. I can go to here and press the, see that says? Category search. And now I can pick sounds from any category I'd like to. I want to pick, let's say, drums. I'll go ahead and look where my drums are. Let me say drums at. I'm looking for drums, and I'll pick out the drums I want to use. It says drums right there. And now, when you go back to my screen, I can pick the drums I want to use. I may go down here and pick some drums I like. We'll look through the sets. We'll look through here. We'll pick something we want to use. I'll pick hip hop. See that? Now, I'm ready to go. Now, I've picked my sound. I'll press exit. And now, my sound is selected. See, it's right there now. It's changed to P, it's right, it's a preset, drums, DR for drums. See that? And we're using voice number 008. Got it? Now it's important to have that click going on. It gives you that pace of what you want to record at. I have my click going on. So here's a click. See this click right there? I can turn it on. See it's on or off. I want it on. It's one, two, three, go. Or one, two, three, four, go. You got that? That's one, two, three, four, go. Let's check that out. Okay, we've got that drum sound selected for our first track. Well, now it's time to record. I press record, and next I'll press play. Watch this. Move the camera. Let's show them for a second here. They can understand what's going to go on here. There we go. You're going to see this right over here. We're going to go to record and play on this side here in the sequence of transport section. There we go. And I'm going to press this play. See the click right there? That's a click. One, two, three, four. It's going to go one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to start to record my part. I'll pick my sound. I'm going to go to... Here we go. One, two, three, four. I'm off. See, I'm off the pace. It's important to know the pace that you're recording at. Now, I had a little stronger feel there. So what I'm going to do right now, I may move it over and increase my tempo. So now I'm increasing my tempo a little bit to about this pace right here. See, that's important to know how to get to your tempo, see? Now, I'll press record again. I want to hear this pace a little bit. Okay, I got the feel now. I'll press record. Start from the top again. Pick my sounds. I'll try One, two, three, four. Now, I'll press stop, okay, start. Now it's looping, see? I did four bars. See that? That's important to understand. Okay, made a little beat up there. Now, I had it in replace. I'm going to move here to overdub. See that? Now I'm going to play something on top of my beat. I'm going to add something to the kick and snare. Now, I'll make sure you start from the top of the sequence, very important. I'm going to overdub on top of that track one. See that? We got it. I can actually undo that. See? I press that button and not can play any instrument I want. Pick more sounds. I 
like that. Now I'm gonna record now. Now I'm recording and see it stop blinking. See that? I recorded that in on to stop that. See it? I stopped it. See it? I can go back to the top again. I'll press. See that? That's like an overdub on top of the track. Okay, you know I'll press play. Start from the middle. See that? Right here you know where you're starting from. And I got a four bar sequence you can see right here. I'm going to press the locate button. And now I'm back at the top. I'll press the play button only. I'm going to make it faster. Turn my data wheel. See that? See that there? Now, I got a tempo I like a little better. Let me add a bass line. That beat's kind of cool, right? Well, now it's time to add a bass line. Bass line. Oh, yeah. Get a bass line going. Okay, now I'm going to play the bass line. I'm going to record already. I'll get my metro on the go first. Okay. Now I'm going to record a keyboard on the next track. Okay, we got some keyboards coming up. We're putting some keyboards in this part next. After the bass line, we got the keys coming up. Check this out. Okay, now I'm going to record on track number three. In my track select, I'll hit three. And now, as you can see, we've moved to three. Of course, we'll do the same as we did before. We can press Mix, I'll press Edit, and I'll press this next thing here, which is four, of course, part three, rather. I'm going to record a keyboard there. I'll press Category Search. I'll go to my keyboards. I'm looking for a keyboard sound that I want to use. I like this sound. Let's pick this sound out right here. I'll press Exit. Now I have this sound ready to be played for that particular track. Now I'm going to record. And now, I have the ability to record this track. I'm going to to replace it, whatever they're going to replace, of course. We can see here, we have these boxes are really filled out. The other boxes are like almost dotted boxes, you can see here. Almost grayed out in a sense where they're not actually done. Every time we record something, it becomes a whole complete box, as you'll notice. Well, next, I'm going to make sure the right keyboard sound, and I'm ready to go. Okay, we're ready to go now. I'm going to zoom back a little bit here. Of course, I'll press my record button. And then, I'm ready to go. My keyboard is ready. I think I'll just do that. I press the play button. See, I don't like that. I can go back here and press job, and we can press undo. Press enter to undo. I'll press enter, and it replaced it. Now, I can go back to record again. We're ready to go. I can even replace it by just playing it over again, but that way if you want to undo something you like, you may want to compare it to what you did before, you can undo and redo again. Okay, now I'm going to record the keyboard part once again. Got my notes right. Here we go. All right. We like that. 
Okay, I'm recording the part now, same as before. I'm of course going to, I'm going to track select, I'll just press 4, I'm on part 4 right here. Next I want to get a sound for it. I'll press mix, press edit, and now we can see, so we're going to track select that, we are right here, part number 4. I'll select the sound, I'll go to category search, I'm going to find a guitar I want to use, and I'll search right here, and I'm looking for a guitar sound that I like called touch funk. Once I like it, I can press exit, and that sound will appear here. I can go back to Mixer. We see we have the guitar piece selected right there. We have our functions with our wave sounds. Of course, we can actually take our little faders and move them up and down and change our panning. And next we can do right here is we're going to record. I'll press the record button, and I'll make sure my sound's right. But first, I'll make sure I'm going to replace mode. I'll make sure I record this new part. I can replace that part. Now once I get my pattern, I can actually take my pattern I've already gotten here, for example, and take this pattern and sort of like, you know, do something with it, like name it. Now I'll go here to Job, I'll select Pattern, and now I can name my pattern. I go here to Name, I can press Enter, and now I can name it. I can move my wheel and name my pattern. Next one, I can press a list here for information. I see the list right there, see that? So you can see the sound, the actual pattern right you want to pick out, the name you want to pick out from the list. You pick out the, to name your pattern. So I'll name this pattern real quickly. And I'll look for the next. I go to the next one. And the next one. Argu, and I'll press enter. Complete. Now I'll press pattern again, and you'll see the name there. See that name there? We've got a name for that pattern. Now sometimes you got a pattern, you want to make multiple patterns up. This pattern sounds pretty cool to me. I may want to take this pattern and let's say copy this, these tracks to another pattern. So here I want to make this, see it says one, this is pattern one. I can have sections to my patterns up to P, from A to P, see that? So I'm going to go to B here, see that? I want to probably copy some tracks. I'm in pattern, I'll go to job, and I'll go select track, which is F5. Now here I can copy tracks, see that? Okay, I'll press enter, and now I can pick the tracks I wanted to actually copy. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go from pattern 1 to pattern B. I want to select track number one. Two, track number 1. See that? I'm going to be in pattern 1 A, track number 1, and put it in pattern number 1 A in section B, track 1. I'll press Enter. So are you sure? I'll press yes to execute. It's complete. I'll press pattern. And we'll see here. We go to B. We've got that little drum part there. I'll press play to check. So you see it's playing. And now I'll copy the rest of the patterns over into B. Okay, now I'm going to do the next pattern. I did track two already. I'm going to go to track three. And now I'm going to go back, track four. And now I'll press pattern, and we can play B. I'll press play. And I can go back here under the A. Move my dial wheel here to A. You see A is right there, and I'll press play. And that's perfect. We now have each part has its own, the same actually copied part. Now watch this. I'm going to B though. I want to add something to B. I'm going to go to B, track select, I'm going to select 5, and track select, and here I'm going to record on track 5. I'll press mix, then I'm going to press edit, 
And then as you can see here, I'm now part fries right there. I'll select the sound, I'll go to category, synth lead. I'm looking for a sound I want to use that's going to be kind of funky for me to get in here. That's this rap lead. I'll press exit. It's the sound I want to use. I'm going to go to record now. And now while I'm in record, what I'll do here in record, now that I am in record right here, I'm going to get ready to record a lead part on top of this. I'm in replace, everything's set up properly. Two, three, four. We got a little synth part in there, right? I'll press stop. Okay, now I want to record uh, a section in C. Make one more section. We're going to go here, I'm going to go to C. You can see it's blank there. I want to record in my first section there. I'm not going to record, I'm going to copy a track. I'll go to job. I'm going to go to track copy. I'll press enter. And here in C, I want to get the same piece I had before. So I'm going to go to, of course, A track one C track one see that got it so now I'll press enter do it yes and it's complete next I want to do track two and now I'm going to take track two from section A to section C enter press yes that's right there we'll go back to pattern we can see we have one and two selected I'll press play So I got is the bass line and the drums. Next, we'll chain these patterns up, these sections from A, B, and C from our pattern number one and make it a little song. Now, once you've got that pattern and it's all lined up, several patterns together, and it's a pattern chain, we can turn that pattern chain into a song. We'll just press job and we'll convert this particular pattern chain into a song. Check this out. I've got my sequences lined up somewhat, and I've got my different um, sections, A, B, and C. Now, of course, I'm in pattern. As you can see, I'm in pattern. I'm in play here. I'm going to go to chain, which is going to be uh, F6. See? And now we're in chain. Now, what happens here, I'm ready to go and play and press record. And I'm going to record. It's going to record the patterns I want to have in the order I want to have them in. So right now, I'm going to be in A. So make sure my parameters are correct. I'm going to make sure my tempo is how I want it to be. The tempo should be 105, the tempo I liked before. And next, I'll press play. But first, I'm going to move my cursor button here to where this is my first part I'm going to use, which is A. I'll press. So now you hear the little song going by, a little pattern right there. I want to go to B next. Check the sort of melody to get into the track. Then I go to C. So you don't want to move too fast. See that? I move too fast for it. Now stop it. And I want to record that over again. So I'll go back to record. And I'll start from the top again. See? We're starting from bar one. I'll press play. I'm going to go to B, two, three. Now B's four bars. Let me show them how long each sequence is. That's seven. Here's eight, two, three, four, C. See that? Now I want to go back to A. One, two, three, four. See that? And now I want to go to B. One, two, three, four. So I'm recording these patterns into the sequence. What you can see here, you can see we are. That's 20. Now, 21. See that? 22. 23. And 24. And I'll stop. Now sometimes you say, I don't know. I may want to change some parts of my pattern, get rid of some parts. We can actually edit this chain play pattern mode here. So watch this. We're, gonna, we're in pattern. We're going to go right here and we're going to select edit. 
Now here in edit, we can see, I'm going to curse up and down every part that we're in. We got the A part, we got the B, we got our C, we got our A again. Well, you know, I may want to change something. I'm going to go back here to this A pattern. I might put another pattern I got there. I'm going to put D. I made a part called D. A little groove thing. And that's going to come in on the 13th minute. See that? I got another section, which is my D section I've got going on. So I'll start from the top again. I will go back to my pattern play. I'll leave the exit. Back to pattern. I'm in my chain. I'll play from the top again now. Press that. Locate button. So here's our first measure, second, our third, and our fourth. Here comes the fifth measure. A little melody comes back in there. A little rap synth move type sound. Let me go to the other part. It's going to be C. Now, next coming up is that new part I just edited in, which is called the D section. Here it comes now, right here. It worked. So let's add a new part right in on my track. And back to, see? We can actually edit our pattern chain play. It's kind of cool. Okay, we saw that, right? We can also, the pattern, we can select edit. We can change, of course, we saw earlier. And we can also press F2. We can copy. We can copy certain measures to certain spots. Let's say we want to copy uh, measure 25 through measures 29. We're going to go 25, 26, 27, 28. Now we want to start this maybe at a measure number. Twenty-nine or thirty. Well, now I'm with the cursor over. I can put the number of times too. I can say I want to do this so many, so many times. Maybe two times. I can press Enter, and it's complete. And I can go back to my pattern display. And I'll have even more measures at the end of my pattern. You can also here in pattern chain section, as you can see we're still in our chain section, see right there, it says chain play. We can also press edit and convert, press F3 now, we can convert that particular chain of patterns, of A, B, C, and a little pattern made up of D, into a song. See right there, song one, we'll select the song we want to put this pattern into, then, we're going to start from measure one, of course, and now I'll press enter to convert. And you can't undo this, so let's do it. Execute. Complete. And now we have song one set up. Now to test it, of course, the only way to do that is to go check out song. We're going to go to song right here. Press song. I've got something in song one. I'll press play. See, now I'm in song. Now it's going to play that pattern I set up there into song. See, it's playing the whole sequence straight through. Straight through. It's playing the whole sequence straight through. Kind of cool. And that's how you can convert your pattern chain into a song. Okay, you know, you got your sequence, you got your pattern. I got my song going on. This is so cool. I can be in pattern. I can be in my chain also. I can go here to mix. I'm not sorry, I go back to play. I can go to mix. And here in mix, as you can see, we are in mix. We can mix the tracks up. Here's how we can do that. If we pan over to the right, left-hand side of our keyboard, right over there, to the left, we're going to go all the way over to our little mixer section right there. I can press play, I can turn the drums out, see that?
Keyboards. So you can actually mix your tracks up. See that? Now if you go back to our screen here, we can even change the panning. Remember, we're in pattern, we're in volume pan. See that right there? This is pattern, it's F1. I can change the panning of that keyboard, the keyboard's right there. I just change it, see that? Now I'm all the way to the right. Now I go back in the center here. I can put my fader back up. Other fader in. And we're good to go. So you can also affect the changes within your pattern. It's really great. Now we can also go to song mode with our same pattern, of course. And we can also go to job and go to edit or job. As you can see there, and change data in the song. So right here I'm in song mode. I can take this particular song, press play. I'm going to mix. I can mix my tracks up, as you can see also here. We have the drum, the bass, the keyboard, the guitar, and the lead. I can go to here. And I can either do the fader, or I can change my data wheel. See? I can move it here, the data wheel. Turn the bass down, maybe. Move the cursor over again, turn my lead all the way up, or bring it down some. So it's important to mix your tracks up and get them just right, particularly in song mode. That way you can hear your whole song straight through and get a feel for what does sound good and what doesn't. Okay, once you got your song in, you like your song the way it is, you want to name it. Here's what you do first. You want to make sure that you go out here and that we press edit. See that? Edit. Got that. We're in song, right? We're in edit. I go to job. And now in job, I've selected song. See song selected right here? And right now, I can copy. I can split song to pattern. Or I can clear the entire song or name the song. I'll press enter and we can name our song as we did before. We can select what we want to select for our particular song. And once we do that, we're good to go. Remember, you can press this little info button and get your list up and go right to what you want to call it. And go to the next one. And see, and you press enter and we got to go back, press song and we got the name there. Good. Okay, now I've named my actual song, of course. So next thing I want to do, I want to save it. I don't want to lose this stuff. I'll press stop. I'm going to press file now. And now here in file, I can go, let's see, I'll make a new folder. I'll press new. I got a new folder there. That's the one. New directory 2. I'll press enter. I'll go back to here. Move my cursor there. This is a directory, and I want to save all. I want to save everything, all the sequence, the patterns, everything going on right here, right now. I can press enter. Illegal file name. See that? You know what? We didn't name it. So we going to get there and name it. In this case, I'm just going to call it one. Enter. Saving now. 1A. See that? And now it's going to save everything. All the parameters, all the patterns, all the songs. It's going to save everything that's in my machine and the setting of how I had it set up. So let's say when I turn it back on and I want to, I want to hear that pattern again, I want to go back into that directory, which is right here, which is new directory 2, and go to 1A and load it up and I'm good to go. Always save your data as you go along. You should play one part, save it, because you never know. You might make a mistake, go somewhere, come back, it's wrong. Always save your data. 
Now, performance mode is very unique. You can play a sound performance mode. You may have like a bass line here in the first couple of octaves. It may have here a little like um, synthesized part. Here, the keyboards. So, what performance mode allows us to do is to have, you know, different sort of sounds on top of this one performance, which means it could be an orchestral performance. We could have timpanis and tin toms and uh, trombones and baritones and violins, violas, cellos, sub bass, contra bass. Oh man, you got a whole orchestra there, but each little section on the keyboard represents that part that's being played. And sometimes a part may be through the entire keyboard range. So in performance mode, we can have several sounds like at the same time. It sounds big and huge. Well, I could talk all day, but look at this. Check this out. Yeah. Now we're here in like performance mode. In performance mode, sometimes you have more than just one sound in performance mode. And I'll click the mute button on the right hand side of our motif. And they will play a part here. Play something for me, Dave. Yeah. Trying to track down, watch this. I hear nothing. That's one sound. So, in performance mode, here we got performance, we have up to several different sounds. We have three different sounds in this mode. And because this is pressed, see, you can hear the different sounds, it's layered. This is a layering technique they use on the motif. And what they're doing here is that we have several different sounds. You can hear one sound, and you hear a little percussion. I'll turn the first one to drum. That's a little wind type sound. This one's that. That's on a performance mode. We can have three different sounds or up to four, and they're actually layered up. Now here in performance mode also, I'm gonna play something else. You're gonna notice here, as I press this button here, we'll zoom right over there for me, Vault. We'll check out what that looks like. I press that button in the performance mode, I've hit my mute button. Now we'll zoom back a little bit, and you'll see here we have these four different sounds that correspond to this one sound. Now Dave will play the keyboards. We'll zoom back a little bit for me, Vault. And Dave, play something for us. I can turn this first button off. Now the drums are gone. Next one. Here. See a little sound of weird sounds in the background of this one. Now I'll turn this one off and it's off. Play this next one. That's the guitar sound that's laying on it. The next one. The bass. So if we look down here at the end of this here keyboard, we can have actually layers in different sections. We'll play a bass here. Turn this other part on with the drum part. And by hitting the pads, or hitting the keys actually, you can hear the drum pattern that's in that particular force mode. Now, in his right hand, while he's playing that bass pattern, we'll have him play something else. But I'll turn on the other part here, the other layer, for the guitar. layer, a bass line layer, a guitar, a little synth, all in this one performance mode. It's kind of cool.